Hi, I'm, I'm Arnie Gunderson. I, I live in Burlington. Um, I have um, a bachelor's in nuclear and a master's in nuclear and reactor operator's license. And I uh, formerly was a senior VP in, in uh, uh, the nuclear power industry working for a licensee. Um, and uh, um, in 1990, I, uh, I, I left the industry. I blew the whistle. I found uh, some violations at, my, at the licensee I worked for and um, brought them to the NRC's attention. They blew me off. Um, I wrote to Congress. And uh, um, it took a congressional investigation by John Glenn to uh, determine that, one, all the violations I had found were, in fact, true, and um, all of the and, – and, and that the um, – NRC was taking bribes from my employer. Um, so my, my personal experience is that uh, I, don't, uh, I don't trust the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, uh, but, but I want to talk a little bit about just two things tonight. Um, one is that um, I'm not against my Yankee running for its 40-year life, and I, but I have intervened twice, one on the uh, life extension and the other was on the, uh, uh, the, uh, the upgrade. I think a deal is a deal, and we had a deal with Vermont Yankee at the old power level for 40 years, and, and, and we should have honored that deal. Um, the, um, there's um, about the plant, there's a couple things you should know about the plant looking forward. One is, the, the, the main issue is this plant could not be built today. And uh, these aren't my opinions, they're going to be uh, quotes directly from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The, um, the box that you see uh, in all the pictures, is um, inside that box is, are two things. One is the containment um, that surrounds the nuclear reactor vessel. And in, uh, in 1972, when the plant was built, uh, a letter between two very senior people on the Nuclear Regulatory Commission discussed the, uh, that particular containment design, and I'll read you the letter. So this is when it was built 40 years ago. This is what the NRC felt about the containment. I recommend that the, this was at the time it was the AEC, Atomic Energy Commission. I recommend that the AEC develop a policy of discouraging further use of a pressure suppression containment. Steve's idea to, idea to ban the pressure suppression containment is an attractive one in some ways. Dry containments have a notable advantage of being a, a, of brute force simplicity. However, acceptance of the pressure suppression containment by all elements of the nuclear field, including regulatory, is firmly embedded in the conventional wisdom. Reversal of this hollowed policy, particularly at this time, could well be the end of nuclear power. It would throw into a question the operation of licensed plants and would generally create more turmoil than I can stand. So 40 years ago, the NRC thought that this containment was a bad design. And new plants have a different containment design. Um, but a deal's a deal. We had a deal until 2012. And, uh, but I think in 2012, that's time to end that deal. That there's actually four things that couldn't be built in this plant today. First, the containment. Second is the fuel pool. And um, uh, William Sorrell and the Department of Public Service have actually intervened to try to get the uh, federal government to take a look at the fuel pool. Again, inside that big box, way up high, is uh, an awful lot of nuclear fuel. And it's, uh, um, the concern is that uh, it, it's a terrorist target for, for an airplane crash or uh, or you know, potentially some kind of other device, but it's a terrorist target in Sorrell in, in Vermont and uh, also in um, Massachusetts and several other states have asked the, N the NRC to reconsider that design. Um, the third thing is the turbine hall. The, uh, if, if I'm that big tall building and this desk is the turbine hall, the turbine spins, and I have a patent on this, so I sort of, I sort of know it pretty well. And every once in a while, the turbine self-destructs. And the shrapnel in the current design would go toward the containment because it spins this way. In modern designs, the, the turbine is, is located radially outward. So if it were to blow up, the, the, the pieces go into the parking lot, but they don't go into the containment. So um, modern reactor designs like Clinton, the only other plant that had a 20% upgrade, have the turbine oriented the opposite way that Vermont Yankee does. And, um, the last thing is seismic. Um, the, the oversight panel has a quote in the report that basically says that the, mod the plant does not meet modern seismic criteria. But a deal's a deal, and, and we have a 40-year deal, and, and, and we, should, um, uh, we should maintain it. So the plant can't be built today. In 2002, while the Vermont Yankee was getting its uh, 
license extended, the NRC did a survey of its own employees, and again, this is from the NRC survey. Um, they said, quote, many NRC employees perceive a compromise of the safety culture. But more disturbingly, 47% of NRC employees were afraid to tell NRC management about safety problems. So half of their own people were afraid to go to their own management about safety problems. And the, the report ends saying, uh, concern is that the NRC is becoming influenced by private industry and its power to regulate is diminishing. And last but not least, um, the, um, in, in Davis Bessie, there was a, an exchange of, of emails, um, one, one senior person to another. And this was about the decision to keep Davis Bessie running. Uh, as Larry Chandler and Stan Collins also said, we, would have made a, we could have made an argument for an immediate shutdown, but we are exercising discretion by allowing them to run <clears throat> to December 31st, but not beyond. Now, one of the persons mentioned in that was Sam Collins. He's the one who exercised discretion to allow him to run. Sam Collins is now in charge of Region 1, which oversees Vermont Yankee. Thank you. I was on the oversight panel that um, I was appointed by Peter Shumlin and uh, um, Peter Bradford down in Peru was appointed by Gay Symington and uh, the governor appointed uh, Bill Sherman and together the three of us appointed two others. And we wrote a report in conjunction with uh, NSA, a, a, a group that looked at uh, the plant, not all the plant though, only about seven or eight percent of the plant. And, um, and, and found 80 areas that need to be addressed uh, in those, uh, in, in those uh, that five or six percent. Um, and they're working down that list of 80 items. Um, if you go up on the Joint Fiscal Office's um, website, my report, my latest report on the progress on that is, is online and, and, uh, and I have some concerns, so I don't want to get into that. I wanted to talk about the cooling towers as a as a example of the of the problem as I see it. Um, these cooling towers were called the wounded knee design, um, and it, it was not after the massacre, but because they have a, a, a structural problem. And since the 1970s, these towers have been failing. Um, in the 80s, in Entergy, another they're in there at coal and nuclear plants. Another Entergy um, subsidiary sued the manufacturer for poor wood. So been known in the industry since 70, these towers were a problem. In 94, Vermont Yankee had a column rotted and replaced it, and the problem was that they couldn't find it because of, of, of weak inspection. In 97, they had another rotten piece of wood in the, in the safety related tower and replaced it, and the problem was they couldn't see it, they couldn't get to it to inspect. And this is in root cause reports. In, um, 2002, when Entergy bought the plant, there was a meeting down in uh, White Plains where Vermont Yankee talked about the problems in those towers to Entergy. And uh, in 2006, of course, they, they failed catastrophically. And the problem was they had poor inspection techniques. Well, you know, the first, first inkling of that was in 2000, and that was 1994. So it was 15 years of poor inspection, and it resulted in a tower collapse. Um, the oversight panel looked at this and the transformer fire and a couple other things, and we felt that, um, that they were not applying enough corporate resources, people, inspection time, and money.